Hey guys, it's Miss Hampton. Uh, we're gonna talk about the sieve of Eratosthenes today as we're learning about some prime and composite numbers here. So uh, who is Eratosthenes, you might ask? What word is that? Um, so he was a Greek mathematician a long time ago, like back in 200 BC, that did lots of cool things like making a really accurate measurement of the size of the earth. Um, but what we're interested in is that he came up with this uh, method for finding all of the prime numbers for, uh, from 1 to 100. So, um, what's a prime number again? Just refresh your memory. It's a number that has exactly two factors, just itself and one. And remember, factors are the numbers that can be multiplied to equal your number. So, for example, um, six is not a prime number. Um, facts that equal six are one times six and two times three. So, one, six, two, and three are factors of six. Since there's more than two factors, six is not prime. It's composite. Uh, five is an example of a prime number. There's only one fact that equals five, one times five, so its factors are one and five. Since five only has two factors, that makes it prime. Okay, so how does the sieve work to find all the prime numbers from one to 100? Uh, what you're gonna need is your hundreds chart. So grab that and then grab like five or six colors, um, as many different like colored pencils or things as you can. You can do this with just a pencil, um, but it ends up looking cooler with colors. So take a second, pause if you need to and grab what you need. Okay, next thing, we are going to cross off all of the composite numbers and then we're gonna end up at the end with all of your prime numbers circled. Uh, we'll start with the number one and we're gonna work our way up. So let's look at the number one. It is um, remembering, remembering that a prime number is a number that has just exactly two factors. So there's only one fact that equals one. It's one times one. So that means one only has one factor. So it is not prime. It's actually not composite either, um, but it's not prime. And that's what we care about today. So um, you're going to pick a color. I chose red and you're going to cross off the number one because it is not prime. All right. Let's look at the next number, number two. Thinking about the factors of two, two times one is the only fact that equals two, so two and one are the factors. That means, since it only has two factors, that two is prime, and the only even prime number, by the way. Uh, okay, so you're going to pick a new color. I chose orange, and you're going to circle the number two. Now here's where we get to get fancy. All the multiples of two have two as a factor. So think about some of the multiples of two, like four or six. All of those numbers are gonna have two as a factor. So that means none of them are gonna be composite. They're all, or I mean, they're, I'm sorry, they're all gonna be composite. They're, none of them are going to be prime, they're all composite. So um, since all multiples of two are composite, let's cross them off. So I took the same color that I circled two with and I crossed off all of my multiples of two. So you might wanna pause the video, take a minute to do that. All right, when you have crossed off all the multiples of two, let's look at three. Factors of three, um, just three and one, that's it. So that makes three another prime number. I'm gonna pick a new color, I chose green, and circle three since it's prime. Now we get fancy again. Using the same logic we used with two, all the multiples of three are going to have three as a factor, like six and nine and 12. All of those numbers have three as a factor. So that means they're all going to be composite. They can't be prime if they have three as a factor. So I'm gonna take that same color green and cross off all of my multiples of three. Notice while you're doing that, that some of them are already crossed off. Think about what does that mean? You might even wanna write down a reflection about that because that's gonna be a reflection question later. What does it mean if some of them are already crossed off? Okay, once you are finished crossing off the multiples of three, let's look at four. Hmm, that's already crossed off. Oh, right, because it's composite. It's a multiple of two. All right, so let's skip ahead then and look at the number five. Factors of five, five and one only. So that makes five prime. Yep, so let's pick a new color. I chose blue and circle it. It's a prime number. So, so far we have three prime numbers, two, three, and five. All right, we're gonna use our fancy logic again, and all the multiples of five are gonna have five as a factor, like 10, 15, 20, all those numbers have five as a factor, so they have to be composite. I'm gonna use my same color blue and cross them all off. 
thinking again, hmm, I'm running into some that haven't been crossed off at all, some that have been crossed off once, and some that have been crossed off three, uh, three times now. So um, what does it mean if a number has been crossed off twice or three times? Hmm. All right, moving on to the next number, six. Ah, it's already crossed off since it's composite. Actually, it's crossed off twice because it was a multiple of two and a multiple of three. So let's skip ahead, look at the next number, seven. Think about the factors of seven. Just one times seven equals seven. So that's two factors that make seven prime. Yay. Okay, since seven is prime, we pick a new color. I chose a kind of magenta-ish, pinkish, purplish color. Um, we circle it, and then we get fancy again. We know that all of the multiples of seven are going to have seven as a factor. So that means they're all going to be composite. We can cross them off. Um, as you're crossing them off, think about this question. What do you notice about the number of new things we get to cross off? meaning like the number of numbers you crossed off that had not been crossed off before. Like this time I noticed the only ones that were brand new were like 77 and 91. Like that's not very many. Hmm. Okay, so now um, we kind of need to think about what Eratosthenes proved. He said that um, you only have to follow this process until you get to 10. So if you look ahead to 10, I know we just finished seven, but look ahead to 10, we've already crossed off eight, nine, and 10. So we know those are composite numbers. So we're finished at this point. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So let's see what this means. The only numbers that are left now that you have not crossed off are prime numbers. These are all the prime numbers from 1 to 100. So since they're prime, we want to circle them just like we circled 2, 3, 5, and 7. So I grab a different color. I chose black. You can choose whatever you want and circle all your remaining numbers. You might want to double check with mine to make sure that you got the right ones because we're going to keep this as a reference. All right. A couple more things to think about here. Did you notice any patterns in the numbers that are prime? Or did you not notice any patterns? That's kind of notable too, if you didn't notice any patterns. Did you notice any patterns in numbers that are composite? Even just in your multiples of just twos or your multiples of three, when you were crossing those off, did you see any patterns? All right, you are finished and have completed your sieve of Eratosthenes and you now have a reference that you can keep in your notebook of all the prime numbers. That is gonna be super handy. So please make sure that your sieve makes it into your notebook. Uh, you are going to want it, I guarantee. Thanks for watching, guys.